When you come right down to it, people aren't really very good drivers. We drive distracted, we drive drunk, we drive badly. One woman is dead. She and 35,000 Americans car, wind up dying every year. But the driver of this car has never had a single accident. That was about 120 miles an hour or so down the street. Chris Curdies and his team from Stanford University built this car. Hey, that was really... What? Come on! There is no driver! This is Shelly, our self-driving Audi TTS. Self-driving racing car. Does that seem wise? Oh, we think it's a great idea. Not remote controlled, self-driving, thanks to its beefed up GPS antennas. By using these radio connections, we can actually figure out where we are within about one to two centimeters. The purpose of this research isn't just to do something amazingly cool. It's to speed us on our way to safer, self-driving, regular cars. So we really think that all of the work that we're doing on this car will ultimately lead to safer vehicles on the road. So what do you say? You want to take it for a spin? All right. As long as we don't go over 14 miles an hour, I'll go. <laughs> It'll be a little faster than that. OK, and so you're, you're, you're I'm not doing anything right now. I... This is not slowing down very much at the curb. No, we really don't have to. It just went off the road, dude. Oh, that's the rumble strip. If you don't go up on the rumble strip, then you're slow. Any race car driver will tell you that. What a smart little car. Riding Shelly is like a violent carnival ride. Her driving maneuvers are not, shall we say, subtle. I think I left a few organs on turn four. So how did Shelly learn to drive herself? She's had the world's best teachers, professional race car drivers. For four years, Gerties has been monitoring their brain activity as they drive this yeah, test vehicle, the X1. We're going to put some EEG recording electrodes on your scalp so we can uh, check out your brain activity. Are we ready? As I drive, research assistant Holly Russell deliberately controls this car's four wheels to make it spin out. The computer captures my driving responses. The squealing is okay? Yeah, you might. Oh. Not bad. So ultimately, you'll be refining this car's software with data you've gathered from human drivers. That's right. We want to use experiments like that one to make Shelly every bit as good as the very best human drivers. Out of the way. To see how good Shelly's software has become, Chris proposes a race. David Pogue, expert suburban driver, versus David Vaden, a professional race car driver, versus Shelly. Just bring the car back in one piece. Either in one piece or in a big burlap bag. Here we go! Come on, baby, come on! Give me some horses! Two minutes, 51 seconds. You've Woo. set the mark for this race, and we'll see how the others do. Woohoo! 251, and I'd like to see a piece of software beat that! Time to beat is 251, old man. Old oh, man. As it turns out, 30 years of racing experience gives David Vaden a slight edge over my time. 219.3. He's a little bit faster by well, more than 30 seconds. And now it's the computer's turn. Start the model. Pedal started. Unmanned vehicle. On the track. All right, up the hill. Cut the outside, cut the inside. And into the final turn. Oh man, that car is on fire. So who won, man or machine? In third place with a time of two minutes and 51 seconds, David Pogue. In second place, with a time of 2 minutes and 21 seconds, Shelly. And today's winner, with 2 minutes and 19 seconds, David Vaden. So the human driver beat the computer, this time, by 2 seconds. But with each round of better software, Shelly gets faster and safer. 
Chris Verdes is convinced that his self-driving car will soon beat any human driver on the road, and that not long thereafter, technologies like Shelley's will trickle down into the cars that we drive every day. Within the speed limit, of course. 